Good afternoon, and uh, thank you for your presence, for your loyalty. The topic of the roundtable is Africa, Europe, and I think uh, Europe. Uh, it's not Europe, Africa. It's Africa, Europe, a new dynamics, and uh, there is no question mark. Uh, that's another key point. Let me introduce the. Uh, you all know the speakers. In the order, Serge Kwe, who comes from Benin, but he comes mainly from Lomé, Togo, where he presides the BOAD, the West African Bank of Development. Thank you for your presence, and I will say it for each one of you. Then number two will be Mrs. Sa, who is away, but she's with us from in Dakar. She is the regional director of uh, ONU Women, uni, uni, uh, Women United Nations in Dakar, and I'm sure she will have uh, views to share. Then number three, my uh, the one sitting next to me, a friend Lionel Zainsou Berlin, well known from the circle. Uh, you know, I think it's a 20th visit, right? Yonel, as you know, was the Prime Minister of Benin. And uh, he's uh, famous in finance. And today he's uh, is associate founder of Southbridge. I'll spare you the details. And number four, and again, no other uh, presence, Alor Kichel, who is also a brilliant uh, individual in finance. And she financed uh, consulting. Uh, uh, office in terms of uh, dealing with debt called the Global Sovereign Advice Advisors. Uh, so, let me say a couple of words. I will say a few words about the topic. Of course, uh, I'll try to be brief. Thank God I can read without looking at my notes. When we look at the the shocks that we've been experiencing in the last two years, the pandemics and today the impacts of Ukraine war, and the two shocks are sort of uh, crossing one another, and they're cumulative now. Uh, clearly, there is a lot of discussion and uh, articulation with Africa, your updates question, on which we co might come back, that of vaccine and the sharing of uh, patents. You know the, the figures. Africa has a vaccination rate which is very low compare, uh, versus what we have in Europe. So it is an element we have to look into. Second element, which is more specific to the Ukraine shock, uh, the, which is the explosion of uh, foodstuff. I was saying yesterday that, sorry to mention myself, but when the price of uh, uh, gas Increase, it's a problem, but we don't die. But when food, the price of food stuff explodes, it's a question of life and death for part of the or death for part of the planet. So clearly, there is this context which should create more solidarity on the other side of the med the world, Europe and Africa, Africa and Europe. And at the same time, it's not always the case, but so. Let's say that, uh, let's admit Europe has, has made efforts. Uh, summits were organized uh, with the, uh, by the initiative of France. But let me mention, well, uh, we joined the Ville of SZ and we were two or three about uh, uh, to work on the uh, presence of Senegal, uh, well, to prepare, sorry, the, together with President Makisa, the presidency of African Union by Senegal. And we economists, this morning in a round table, we, we asked the question of uh, the role of economists. Well, we made a couple of proposals in order for us to decide. We came back to the problems we face of redistribution of specific uh, uh, money, um, currency, uh, uh, SD, or SDR, sorry, sorry. Yeah. And uh, with Jean Hergé and others, we made proposal as to the implementation of a financial stability mechanism in Africa. And on a personal uh, note, I will work with the, the, the board on to go into this issue of financial stability mechanism. We made proposal so that Africans would have a notes, uh, rating agency 
and Pan-African Rating Agency to reduce the cost of the debt and so on and so forth. So all this on the table. Thank you. Part of this is, uh, has been, uh, uh, is now used by President Makisa in Addis Ababa when he opened the session of the African Union. So we'll talk about that and we'll talk about your topic. Trouvé. But you can find it because subjects can actually converge. This is what I wanted to say because actually everything is very, all the subject is very topical. In full debate, some reproaches are being made to, to, against us as Europeans because we are not in our present. Maybe in some way, we are not generous enough. But Europe shouldn't make any mistake. Bilateral Europe. Africa is not bilateral, actually. And secondly, Europe is not the, the only one on the African soil. There's a growing competition with China, Russia. So Europe doesn't have a monopoly position anywhere. There's competition on that subject, and we should make sure that it should be to the benefit of African countries and not to the detriment of African countries. Thank you. It's your turn. You you have the floor. Thank you, Christian. Thank you for this invitation. And it's with great pleasure that I will now speak to say a few words. First, on something that I said when I started heading the West African Bank of Development about Africa. Co uh, African corporations, African banks are undercapitalized, and this is, uh, everybody knows it. If we continue not to understand that capital is actually the most important thing, then we are mistaken, we are hugely mistaken. We are in a continent which is very familiar with debt subjects, but not familiar with capital subjects. But with capital-related subjects. And it's actually with capital that we can actually address the matter, mask, the matter of risk subjects to address debt in the best possible conditions. And when I say that, that means the rate level, but also in terms of maturity, because you can't develop a continent when states or corporations cannot underwrite debts in under normal conditions for a longer period of time than 10 years. That's not possible, that's not feasible. And this is an important uh, statement. It was actually some, a view that was shared by President Macron during the previous conference with the African Union and the European Union in Brussels. I'm very happy to see that the global getaway has been endowed with 100 billion. That's actually already a first milestone. But all these good intentions are actually hitting a wall. There are facts that cannot be changed. What are they? As you said, Christian, it's actually special drawing rights. That's one of my favorite subjects because I consider that here beyond the Marshall Plan, which we were talking about earlier, we have, and I hope that here we have, and this is why I'm talking about the, with the present tense, we have a historical opportunity, I'm saying historical opportunity to allow, to enable our uh, continent to be responsible. Capital implies responsibility. There is a redirect, uh, re, uh, uh, redirectioning uh, system that with a leverage effect, with the debt, can be provided to the public, but also to the private sector, because the private sector needs to uh, take over from the public sector. We have this opportunity that is facing a difficulty, which you mentioned, Christian, earlier. This subject is not technical, but it's rather political. We've had difficulties, but today we are converging towards this. We had to go from a monetary meaning to a financial meaning or a, a apprehension of the term. Why doesn't it move forward? That's the question. That's one of our challenges. 
I will not go further on that subject, but I would say that capital is actually the most important thing. It's actually responsibility, because it entails responsibility. Thank you. And you still have uh, some credit. You have some uh, speaking credit. You may speak further later on. And as for all of you, like for all the other sessions, I can receive questions from you on my iPad for those that are physically attending, but also for those that are online only. And I will try to do my best to uh, ask the questions. Uh, we have with us a wonderful smiling lady with uh, the uh, sun rays of Dakar, I'm sure. We are delighted to share this moment with you. I don't know if you want to react upon what was said earlier, but you want to mention, you want to talk about some subjects that are dear to your heart. It's time for you now. Hello, thank you. I would like to uh, say happy Tabaski Day. This is what we have in uh, Senegal. I'm happy to be online with you today, despite the holiday, because this continent needs to release 50% of its potential and human capital. And there's an important human capital that is women. I know that the discussions will be mainly based and focused on economy, but my baseline is to say that we can't improve the relationships between Europe and Africa if we do not have women at the center of our conversation. We're delighted to see that many European countries, France included, have a feminist uh, foreign policy. The, they want to answer, to face three challenges, especially African ladies. First of all, it's rights, the challenge of rights, rights to education, to land ownership, to reproduction health, to health. And these are our rights. And partners, whoever they are, should help us to uh, push the limits. The second challenge is that of representativity. When you look at uh, uh, the uh, African Union family photo, you see only one lady, that's the chair of Ten Tanzania, the president of Tanzania. So today, we need to push boundaries in terms of representativity. We need to push the limits in terms of resources. Here we talk about economics beyond the SDRs. We would like our partners our de for the development, the financial institutions, the DOAD, the World Bank, or even world philanthropy like Melinda Gates. They should play this role as a catalyzer to make for uh, women's empowerment. I think that the Ukrainian crisis is an opportunity for a lot of African countries and that will help them to uh, actually achieve uh, food sovereignty. I don't know if you can hear me. Uh, we actually can hear you very well. We, we are following, we are we're listening to each and every of your words. We're listening. To, I can hear, we can hear you. The Ukrainian crisis is an opportunity for Africa to achieve uh, food sovereignty, to correct the narrative that we can read in the social networks, in uh, the print media. Uh, we sell a lot of wheat. But a lot of uh, con con uh, countries actually uh, consume a lot of uh, local crops, like uh, our bananas. And I don't think that we will die out of hunger because we do not have any wheat coming from Ukraine. It's not actually an accurate perception. And the, what I know about the situation, the, we have the OCP, which is the greatest pr producer. We also had uh, ECS that was producing fertilizers. I think this should be an opportunity to change things. How can we change things, especially in agriculture? 
We think that as women, to change things, we should need five things. First of all, access to, f to farmland. And amidst the partnerships that we have woven with the rest of the world, we want you to be on our side on this uh, subject. We have to win the bet of productivity. We're reaching towards the COP27. And I think we should produce better in a resilient way to uh, climate change to make sure that our productivity is sustainable. With cereal crops, with our superfoods that the world is uh, trying to get right now, 70% of agricultural labor is actually made of women and we have to reinforce their capacities. This is an important goal. When we talk about funding, and when I'm actually trying to uh, defend all the rights of women on the continent for 24 countries, the women have said to all the, will want us to say to the economists that we have to get out of the ghetto of the eco-finance. They want credit lines, they want venture capital, they want guarantee funds, they want insurance, agricultural funds, they want leasing, uh, and a lot of products that are more complex and that will respond to their needs. We want to, we have to speed up the access to market and all the decision makers that maybe here in this room, we have to win the bet of infrastructures, may it be for roads, energy, renewable energy, we need to use gas. I know that uh, there's a whole momentum around in investment reduction on gas, but uh, this is a catalyst for change and transformation, and the partnership with uh, Europe should include gas. So that's my message that I would like, that's the message I would like to convey. And we need our men as well for this. So. I'm talking on behalf of all women for a long time. Women, African women, and also European uh, women have tried to defend their rights on their own. But we need also decision-making men that actually lead the world governance to convey this message and to support our cause and our agenda. That's a he for she. That's actually the message we would like to convey. Thank you. Thank you, madam. Thank you. Uh, you will have the opportunity to take the floor again, I'm sure. Uh, Lionel. Oh, hello. Yes, dear friends. I, I fully agree with what the, the, this lady just said, but some countries like uh, our country, through Serge in Benin, which are matriarchal societies. So we know, we do understand the importance uh, in our economies, in our power structures of the, uh, of the mother, the daughter, the wife, the sister. We are varied societies in Africa, and of course, we have different topics. But anyway, today, if we talk about the whole of Africa with Europe, I would say that uh, I've attended the summit on the French presidency and uh, the Makisal presidency in Brussels on February 18. I would say that very much like Serge, there is a true European dynamics. There are true commitments. On the African side, there is something like a kind of a skepticism, you know, uh, uh, you know, not aggressive uh, attention, but skepticism nevertheless. Because the question is that, are we, do we have the instruments to efficiently, rapidly deploy the 150 billions. People who are used to, I mean, you know, it happened to me in the private sector when I was a, a French financier, when it happened on the Benin side, when I was a, a, minister, a minister in Benin. On average, from the European Development Fund, we only pay 50% of the means which have been officially granted. So 50% is not much. And in the in time limits, which have nothing to do with the private sector. When you cross the mirror, you run a pri uh, private French private equity fund to mobilize 1 billion euros. It will take you about a week, let's say a week, a good week. 
when you become Prime Minister of Benin, to mobilize with the same level of documentation, legal documents, justifications of the business model, when you have to raise 1 billion euro, it takes five years. But there clearly is a difference in terms of economic efficiency between a week and five years to achieve goals. For example, the, there is energy urgency. Prices of gas and oil create not only inflation, additional costs for businesses, but they are, for the time being, even before the f agricultural uh, shortage takes over, they're the uh, strongest poverty factor in Africa. All collective transport systems in major cities, all the movements uh, bec uh, become extremely expensive, and it is now the uh, most uh, is the most constraining uh, attack on uh, purchasing power. So the next riots will not be about food, it will be about fuel. So you see what you could put in uh, AC, DC, G AC generator, uh, oil in countries where there is no electrical light. In my country, we don't have electricity everywhere. So the, report, the answer of renewable is very rapid. But if you want to equip a little village, a little city with about uh, 20,000 inhabitants, you can do it in, in a couple of, let's say, six months. We, we showed that in Senegal with uh, Bokol, the first uh, uh, sun power uh, plant uh, plug, uh, connected to the national network. But you can do it at the local level, provide rapid solution within a year. But what you do technically in six months, it takes you three years to get the finance. So there is something here. See about the instruments that Europeans looked in, should look into if at the European multilateral level they would have these such instruments. Otherwise, it's like Charles P, you know, when he talked about the Kant moral, you know, when, uh, when Kant has pure hands, but he has no hand. So if the European Union has no hand, the purity of its, of its intention could create, a, you know, a skepticism. So in this context, would uh, food solidarity in the coming months be part of this uh, European dynamics? The answer is uh, very ambiguous, actually, because if we take the vaccine solidarity response, and France would be an exception because it took more initiatives faster. So if we talk about just when we were, we, and we had money, you know, we rapidly in Africa, because Africa, we can go fast as well. There are people who said recently, uh, in the last few years, that we were, uh, you know, uh, you know, in, you know, stop, you know, uh, we did not enter history. That was done in Dak in October in the 2007 in Dakar. So we are running into history, and the answers to the pandemics were such that uh, we. We learned from the Europe, European uh, delays, and this is where we were less impacted. But it will be the same thing with food, but it will be based on our own efforts. And clearly, the, the, the European dynamics has to contribute to this uh, amazing acceleration of uh, the African history. Early on, Mrs. Sarr talked about giving uh, women, which who are the I think I'm consuming my additional minute of survey. I'll stop now. I'll stop now. But unless he, he unless he he lends, he lends it to me with an acceptable interest rate. No. Bear in mind that in this acceleration that we will implement in the in food, there is amazing elasticity. Let me give you an example. In Mali, and that's why the government fell. They dropped the price of. Uh, on first resource uh, from 260 to 200 francs CFA per kilo. So we went from 7,000 ton to 350,000 ton. It's an annual crop in six months. <coughs> we had killed the first resource of the country. Well trained in the school of war. The, the new regime went to 280 uh, euro uh, francs and we, the production rise. So, uh, 
we're an empty continent. It's an empty continent. The pop density, policy, po uh, density population, the city is only 40, you know. So we have huge uh, uh, agricultural land. So public support should be assigned to those who uh, capital, you know, which is patient, but it has to come quickly. And in the, uh, the, the it is an, you know, DTS is an, it is a African invention between Cyril Ramaphosa and President Macron, who convinced the Chancellor, who convinced the G20, but it was a response which had to bring up to 100 billion, 100 billion, um, funds to recover from the uh, pandemics and now they they actually debating this so in 2025 we'll have money to be able to respond to the to the program of 2021 so if europe wants to uh, have a moral it has to have hands now to be more positive the private sector is in full evolution in Africa. I'm not sure that major uh, European corporations, uh, some of whom pull out of Africa, help the states. In Brussels, there were very few business managers. There were only officials, very few, a couple of uh, financial experts, but very few business managers. We need the, the enlightened opinion we need the opinion to say, well, the private sector must accept to consider that we are part of the future in Europe and, part, and a very dynamic part. And Billy, uh, stop. Oh, yeah, we were all going to die of, uh, from COVID. Well, I'm among the survivors. I think we can commit ourselves to be efficient in order not die of starvation and look for at Africa for what it is, a very resilient continent with today in the financial world less conservatism than in the uh, industrial world, and especially in climate finance. Everything will be played in Africa because nothing has yet started in Africa in forest, agroforestry, and uh, all series of uh, fundings which are profitable, Africa is a virgin land. So the European private sector should understand that and come to help this amazing ramping force, which is the private sector in Africa. And Law, you have the floor. Well, I would like to share with you three reflections around what was said early on. The title of the panel, Africa Europe, is uh, important and interesting. It's not so long ago, a lot of people said France, Africa, never asked themselves the question. But now, this new order, Africa Europe, and there is no question mark, it is something important, and we have to understand collectively as the movement that took place in the last few months and years, so that uh, it should be uh, what we considered as natural. Of course, a lot of summit took place, a lot of progress were made, but let me remind you that during the last summit, we talked about a 150 billion plan, uh, uh, Europe that would provide to Africa, but China alone put 10 times more in the last few years, not just uh, provided, but actually invested. So I don't want to stir uh, controversy, but remember collectively that uh, Europe and European countries were highly committed in Africa. They took part in uh, debt reduction initiatives. And then after that, we pulled out of it and where investments were uh, present. And African countries said, but please do come and invest. We said often no, because too risky or uh, rates which were uh, too high and not reliable, viable. And by doing so, well, they had uh, the turn to uh, companies or Chinese loans which could be discussed and debated, but you know, it was available money. When you need money for your development, you take money where it is, and that's normal, because we need to uh, expand and grow, to grow. So, in uh, Africa relationships, very much like between continents, we are dealing with long-term relations, and I uh, agree with Serge, and uh, this uh, and the commentary on the, and uh, everything was said about the need to involve all players in this approach. Another thing I want to say that they are, they are 
the, the third reflection would be around the adequacy of what is available for the time being. Let me give you an example of a country with which we are uh, working, which faces a critical situation, about 20 million reserves, uh, 20 million reserves in central bank. That is uh, a couple of days ahead of them. So we are negotiating with the, uh, monitor, the IMF and institution bilateral Europe and all these are long processes, whereas we need emergency support now, not in two months, three months. And of course, the debt has to be sustainable, and of course, there must be financial equilibrium, but we have to have immediate response capacity. So I want to say a lot of progress has been achieved, a lot of instruments are available, but there is even more progress to be made for immediate and rapid answers, and especially when you've got crisis answers. And not only we should not hesitate, uh, we need, uh, uh, but when, when in a few months later, you know, the amounts are uh, le le level, leveled or uh, as they uh, were not financed well, possibly, but uh, you know, but you're not necessarily free to use your as, uh, SDRs. Well, you know, uh, it's difficult for the countries to understand what we wanted to do by telling them that we give them that. So we need those instruments uh, in, uh, in emergency and they must be uh, provided, whatever the conditions. We need sophi financial sophistication. This is what Mrs. Saar was saying, talking about the various types of finance that were necessary. And uh, we don't want to copy models known everywhere. We want to mimic models. We want to meet the real needs. And let me give you a perspective, because the IMF or institutions help Africa. But if we compare the money uh, paid for some Latin America country, but like Argentina, uh, versus what was uh, paid in Africa, and we look at it uh, with versus the population, it's very unbalanced for, you know, to the detriment of African countries. So we have to be aware of the impotence of the Renovo continent and of its human mass to find the appropriate instruments you know, in amounts and types of instruments. Enfin, qui viennent pas de moi, auquel je vais peut-être ajouter mon grain de sel. Euh, alors, vous les prenez et répondront ceux qui voudront bien, ceux qui auront un avantage comparatif pour y répondre. Euh, Serge, je crois que tu, tu parlais des banques et Madame Sarr en parlait en disant euh, au-delà de la, pas de la mode, au-delà au du microcrédit, il faudrait aussi que les femmes aient accès à, de, à des financements bancaires. C'est ce que j'ai compris aussi là-dessus son intervention. Il y a une question euh, sur la santé des banques africaines. Euh, qui doit capitaliser les banques du continent africain et comment Pouvoir public ou privé Si tu veux bien stocker je, 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 je vais jusqu'au bout. Comme ça, vous, vous allez vous partager le boulot. Euh, sorry. And there is a question as well, an anonymous question. Sorry. The Africa is, uh, is like a, a woman who has a lot of courtesan, but who doesn't know her value. How can we reverse the trend so that Africa would be integrated? It would have its real power in decision-making institutions, for instance, at the world level. And how could Europe help it? Yesterday, Mrs. Lagarde reminded us something which is important about the G20. Today, only one country is a member of G20, which is South Africa. When I mentioned this under-representation of Africa, 55 countries are represented by one. Now look at the other parts of the world. The representativity is much higher, if I remember well. So, one for 55 countries. So when I mentioned the uh, 10 years ago this issue, they said, oh, but sir, Africa is represented by the fact that the general director of IMF, president of the World Bank, is around the table. They represent all member states, including Africa. I said, OK, but uh, the general director of the uh, IMF and president of the World Bank represent France as well and not African countries. So France is represented two, three times around the table. So. How can we deal with the tackle this problem of Africa and global governance? Second major question, which is asked to you for one of your uh, participants. Uh, so there was also a question on ecology. 
how can we help Africa towards the path of energy transition, ecological transition? That's one thing. How about its development? There's also a more specific question. What do the panelists think about the LSF liquidity facility um, instrument? That's for Serge or others. That was actually proposed by Vera Sangwe. I haven't mentioned all the questions. Then there's a question on the subject we mentioned, Africa is also a soil of competitiveness for the Western side, but also for China. We've talked about Russia. So it's if there's a lot of competition from all over the world on that side. Is that positive? Is that negative for our African friends? There are two other issues that we might handle. There's a lot of convergence between Madame Serra and what you said on capital, because we have also the physical the capital, we have financial capital, but we also have the human capital. When we talk about capital today and everything what Mrs. Sa said on women and the political uh, role beyond the economy, that's also, that, that deals also with human capital. Well, I would like to wrap up with two points. We talk about Europe and Africa, Africa and Europe. How about Europe? Do you have the feeling that the 27, I'm not talking about the others, that the 27 member states of the European Union are convergent on how they deal with Africa? My impression is that Germany has made an important step towards us. As for France, obviously, it's at uh, the forefront for historical reasons. We don't need to remind you of them because it was uh, an important colonial power. And now it's out with uh, the Brexit. How about, what is your feeling about, do you feel that there's more intra-European convergence? And then I'm turning towards our African friend. We talk about uh, 55 countries in Africa. We have Western Africa, Central Africa, Eastern Africa. And we talk about sub-regions, Serge, Lionel, Anne-Laure, Madame Moussa. Do you feel that there's a convergence beyond the regional approach in Africa nowadays? Do we have 55, 55 countries that agree on the way they have to deal with us Europeans? That's the questions that I ask. You can answer whatever you want. We'll start with Mrs. Saar, who's online. And you actually pick up whatever you wish. Thank you. Thank you for these questions. My opinion is the following. The continent has understood that to be able to have a win-win situation with Europe, we need to start by having a strong relationship between the two of us. The free trade uh, agreement will be a good opportunity between for the European for the African countries to be to have more solidarity, to engage in trade between each other, and to position themselves versus Europe and the rest of the world. I would like to talk about world governance as well, because world governance is a subject that is always mentioned by the president. He also talks about safety and in other fora as well, where African voices are not well represented, as you said. You mentioned the G20, but beyond this uh, lack of representativity in world governance, we would like to have more ladies as well, more women. And I think that it is very important to have quotas. I come from Senegal. We've had parity, gender equality, since 2012 uh, for the parliament and also for local authorities. There's also momentum around female entrepreneurship. There's an emergence that we dream of, and we know that uh, emergence will be embodied by a woman 
and uh, the World Bank is uh, helping initiatives such as the Abad one to have SMEs and maybe with also public policies. I'm s stating, for instance, Kenya as an example. Kenya gives 30% of its uh, public bids to ladies, to young people, and also people with disabilities. We also have countries in Africa that have affirmative procurement systems like Togo, Senegal has a, an embryo of that. So we think that to, make, to move the lines, we need to have a strong political will to make sure that we implement a policy that would speed up the process. And everything that I've heard today confirms that we should speed up our process if we want to achieve our goals, if we want to have a growth rate that would be uh, uh, above 10 percent. We are convinced that as ladies, the emergence would be in the shape of a woman. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, Serge. You have some credit in terms of, uh, of uh, uh, floor time. Thank you. The international financial system is actually all about two things for Africa. The international financial system is actually all about giving money. We say you're not eligible to market to the mature market, so we will give you money. We see that it doesn't work because this will actually close up those that did benefit from this gift to, to have the head above water, nothing else. The second thing from the international financial system is to grant credits, to grant loans. But once again, the nature of these loans does not enable to fund investments that we need, and I'm going to talk about it later, in the conditions of rates and maturity that we need. There are five sectors that are key sectors. And it's quite straightforward, actually. Infrastructures, how can we move from uh, city A to city B? How can we communicate from uh, place A to place B? We're talking about roads, airports. Second thing, energy, and obviously renewable energies. Of course, it has a cost. It should have a cost that should be compatible with the development of our countries. Third point, agriculture. 60% of farmland in the world, I'm talking worldwide, as Lionel was saying, are in Africa. Everything can grow in Africa. I talk when we talk about uh, strawberries in Burkina or soya in Benin, for instance. They're wonderful. And then tourism, real estate, and uh, social dwellings, but also human capital. Everything that is related to health and education. These are the five important subjects. And we have actually a late motive that is that of respons social responsibility and also environmental responsibility. That's uh, actually the framework, that the, 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 the positive circle, circle that we should have. Today, the subject at hand is that of capital. That's the responsibility. Who actually will pay for the first liabilities, for the first losses? There's a bit of insurance, of course, but we should make everyone responsible and give them the, the capacity to rely upon solid equities. And I'm talking in front of uh, previous uh, managers like Olivier. When we look at history, uh, 2008, the 2008 crisis, it was all about two elements. First, it was the necessary recapitalization of banks. That was what is important. The subject matter was actually the SDRs. So it's, it's repeating itself once again. We talk about the problem and then the remedy. And we have to see where we can solve the problem, where decisions were made in G20 and G7. So indeed, Christian, I agree with you on the idea upon which 
the Afri Africa should participate, should attend the G20, but it should be G20 plus one because everybody would, would ask who's the plus one. The, the important decisions are made there at this forum. And there's also this uh, quote from Richelieu that I find is more, we shouldn't fear uncertainty, we should just anticipate it. Shocks happen, they occur. In 2008, 2009, the crisis in, in, in Argentina, for instance. I'm, I'm very afraid of uh, uh, our Lebanese friend, the, the subcrime uh, uh, crisis as well. So the idea is not whether we're going to have other shocks, but we need to have tools. We need to know which tools we can have to anticipate that, to have a plan. Thank you. We're being told that it is over, but I think we should take two minutes to wrap up. Anlo, go ahead. Just a, a comment. I totally agree with what was just said on the permanence of capital and the necessity of investments, but also the matter of costs of funding. This was said by the works that were made on investment by a rating uh, uh, Pan-African company. All the studies that were made showed that there is a negative bias as uh, to uh, Africa, and we can see it with the nating from the OECD, and they're all unfavorable uh, when, it, um, when it comes to Africa. So as a wrap-up, we should change our prism, our perception of risk, because Serge is uh, is right. Of course, there will be a debt restructuring, but that's part and parcel of the life of countries. And we should anticipate that. We should apprehend that. But that doesn't mean that we shouldn't invest and build an, a risk appreciation that's up to par with the potential of the continent. Thank you. I would like to wrap up on a positive note, if you allow me. The question is not to know there should be a, di a new dynamism thanks to the Europeans. Actually, Africa is reaching out once again, is giving an, invita an invitation to Europe, and we should not lose the opportunity to be indispensable for Africa. Because as it was said earlier, there's a bit of competition. China shouldn't hide the forest. We're working more and more with South Korea. Uh, when we look for uh, wide public uh, electronic equipment, and you can see that there'll be a lot of Korean equipment. We work more and more with Vietnam, but also we work more and more with Turkey, and we work more and more with Brazil. And all this, all this momentum has woken up the presence of Europe. It's not a new dyma dynamics, it's a new invitation. 60 years or so after the independence, we invite the Europeans to participate to the acceleration of U uh, the, the African development. And it's indigenous. What is not said out of discretion is that he's doubling the capital, Serge, with a lot of support from Europe, actually. So that means that it was heard from Europe. And that's with the development back, but also it's heard by the Arabic world and the Africans themselves. You cannot imagine how much, the, uh, uh, how much Africa has become indigenous. We govern ourselves collectively. And I think the COVID response was made collectively in Africa the debt, uh, the bilateral uh, debt uh, governance were done also among the 55 countries of the European, uh, uh, of the African Union. But there was something that struck me. We talked about uh, the fact that Africa was like a woman with a lot of courtesans around. It's better to have a lot of courtesans, isn't it? Then let's go back to the past and being raped. We have courtesans. We do not have rapists. And we are inviting whatever the uh, nature our, of our past love relationship, whatever the history was, it was the past. It is the past. And now we are inviting Europe. I'm not saying that it's the last chance for Europe. But I'm saying, you know, Africa is starting to govern itself on its own. And amidst the European countries who love working with us and who progress more uh, than the large uh, powers, we have Poland, we have Spain, we have Romania. 
So actually, whole, the whole of Europe is invited by all Africa. Thank you very much. Thank you. We are going to give uh, the floor now to the rest in the next session. Thank you.